Howdy folks. This massive thing arrived today and it's so big it doesn't even fit in shot. My uh, little goose neck is not high enough to get this thing all in frame. Uh, this is the Duxtop um, 8100MC induction cooktop. Uh, so this is just a portable induction cooker. It's only about two inches thick and uh, it's pretty light and you can get them I bought mine on Amazon, but you can buy them in a bunch of places. Uh, they go for a whole wide range of costs. I think I paid maybe 90 bucks Canadian or something, tax and shipping included, so not terrible. And uh, I bought this just because my stove is electric and it's not terribly uh, fast, should we say, at boiling water. Um, and I, I wanted to sort of experiment with uh, induction, and this is the cheapest and easiest way to do this, especially since I'm renting a house and I don't really want to go out and uh, buy new appliances. So I'm not really going to do that much of a review on this because there's a, at least one good review on YouTube already um, that I think covers everything that really needs to be covered. Um, I mean, what else would I do? Just show you boiling water? I don't really think that's terribly exciting. Um, it works really well. Um, it's 40% faster um, on, on on this to boil water than on my uh, existing stove, so yeah, I thought that's perfectly fine. Uh, the only review part that I'm really going to do um, is I'm going to note the buttons. Uh, if you actually watch the review uh, that's on YouTube, you just search for it. It's the pretty much the first result. One of the the the, the guy who did the review mentioned that these buttons for incrementing and decrementing the uh, power level or temperature were wrong were the wrong way around um, the uh, up was on this side and the down was on this side and he said that was counterintuitive and that video was posted about three years ago and my model which has a manufacture date of um, April uh, 2015 so just a few months ago the buttons are the other way around they're the correct way so I wonder if uh, users complained or maybe uh, maybe they watched his video and decided to change the front panel around but uh, yeah uh, the, the, it, it is different uh, from the, the model that he had so uh, they've, they apparently they've been making these for about five years now so they've probably undergone a couple more production changes than that so anyway without further ado uh, let's tear this apart and uh, see uh, how, what's inside, I guess, the production quality, and see how long this is going to last, because this thing has a input power rating of uh, 1,800 watts, um, so pretty much 15 amps, and this thing, uh, obviously, has got some pretty serious power electronics inside, uh, and they're going to get hot, so uh, I'd love to know how reliable this thing is going to be long-term. Uh, one of the other interesting things is the power cord, You'll notice that uh, it's not grounded, which for something like this, something that you would put water on as a kitchen appliance, I would have expected this to be a grounded plug, uh, but it's not, which is quite unusual. The cabling is quite nice, though. Um, it's 105 degrees C rated 14 gauge, so uh, that's nice. But uh, it's not universal input. It's specifically designed for uh, North America. Uh, or the UK. I'm, I'm assuming they have a UK model, but I, I haven't checked that. I don't know. On the underside, we have uh, a cooling fan. When it will decide to focus. We have a cooling fan here, which uh, is not terribly bad. Um, it's pretty much like a quiet um, exhaust fan, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, on the bottom here, you can see 1800 watts, you can see when mine was manufactured. Um, also, you can see it's got the Intertech logo, not the uh, UL listing, so that... I'm not sure if you should be afraid of that or not. I, I don't know uh, that much about the stigma around Intertech and companies that decide to uh, get their stuff certified by Intertech, but... Eh, whatever. We'll tear it apart and uh, see what is inside because I just got this and I don't really want to break anything. I'm not going to use my electric screwdriver. Okay, so the screws are off and the top is coming off. 
but there is a connector for the front panel. A very, very wide connector. Let's see if I can get this off. Yes. Excellent. Okay. And we are in. So, first thing you'll notice is the copper coils um, for the actual induction itself, and they're mounted on, this feels like, like glass fiber reinforced plastic to me, um, which is probably what it is for the thermal resistance, and it's got this thin layer of, almost like epoxy, like they've just epoxied the coils on, but they haven't flooded the coils. It's just tacked on at the bottom, which is interesting. So we've got more screws falling out. Um, we've got our cooling fan down here in the corner. And I'm not sure how good the lighting is here, but it's a very strange, strange fan. Um, if you look at the blade design, um, they're pretty much flat and they've got this really abrupt bend in them and I'm not sure if this is why the thing is so ridiculous well I shouldn't say ridiculously loud but I mean given the fact that this is pretty much a computer fan um, it's a lot louder than I think it needs to be so it's possible they've just gone for a really cheap fan and that's why it's uh, loud I mean it's not it's not unnecessarily loud um, but uh, it's just, it's just interesting. It's made by the Dong Guang. You, you, um, no, I'm, no, I'm not trying to say that. It's an 18 volt, 0.17 amp fan. 18 volts is a little unusual. They may not be running it at 18 volts. Um, I'm not quite sure. The other thing you'll notice is there's some heat sinking compound on this little spring loaded plastic uh, bit here. And if I had to guess, that is probably, um, because that's in contact with the top, which is this glass plate here, you can see the smear of uh, thermal paste. So what I think they've done is they've probably got a thermal sensor in that, uh, in that piece there, so they can sense the uh, top of the glass temperature because the glass, um, or sorry, the device, has a maximum temperature and uh, in the manual it says if it reaches that it will automatically shut off so that must be how they're doing it must be how they're doing the sensing because of course it's not a conventional heater you can't uh, you can't sense it that way because the heater is actually the pot itself right you can't embed a thermal sensor in the user's pot so uh, so this is the uh, the coil and you can see, ah uh, yes, there's a sensor right, right there in the middle, and that is definitely, uh, definitely a thermal sensor, probably a thermal couple of some kind. And it's got some really massive, massive thick cables that are bolted down here, and uh, I'm not going to take those off because they've probably been Loctited, and I'd like to keep them that way. So we've got a big, big heatsink here. And obviously our power transistors here, which are doing the high frequency switching of the uh, the uh, mains into the the coil, are obviously under here. And I see one, two, three, four screws, plus one that holds the heat sink to the chassis. So um, I'd guess that there's probably uh, four devices under there. I don't want to take this off. Um, I'd really rather not. So I'm not going to, unfortunately. But down here we've got our board. Sorry for the, the horrible camera work on this video, but uh, I mean, this thing is just, it's a lot bigger than my desk, unfortunately. And I can't move all the stuff off my desk. So this is our main board. And you can see the big connector down there. Uh, that was for the front panel, which I'll show you in a moment. The two pin connector there is obviously for the thermocouple that goes to the, uh, that sensor. We've got uh, this big blue thing is actually a capacitor. It's a BM branded 
uh, 6.8 microfarad 400 volt DC 275 volt AC capacitor, um, which is interesting. And I believe they're using that as the big mains, uh, like main input capacitor, because you can see the mains comes in there. It's got the two bolt terminals. We've got a common mode choke there, um, which is interesting. They, they've used them on the other side, on the output side, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, we have two chips uh, on this board, a bunch of discrete transistors. Some of those are probably ICs. This one here is an ST uh, VIP ER12A 4F. And the one here, this chip is actually conformally coded. Um, it definitely has a layer of something on it. The board is not com conformally coded, but it, this one has something on it. This is just a uh, LM339, which I believe is a compared to an op amp. Oh god, I can't remember. And the other thing you'll notice is the name on there. Uh, it says better BT-2013 T1 V07. So. Uh, You'll 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 notice on the uh, the front panel it also has the name Better, so it's possible that they are uh, the company that was contracted to make this, um, or the the company that actually made makes the PCB. I'm not quite sure. Up in the the corner there, you can see we have more more of these strange blue uh, plastic packaged capacitors. This one is eight microfarads, 400 volts. And these two are 0.3 microfarads at 1,200 volts each. So uh, I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. We, of course, we have a bit, another big inductor there. So all of the electrolytics that are on here that are not these ones, they are made by uh, Cheng X or Chenks. I'm not really sure how you would say that. So again, question over reli questionable reliability. Um, let's see what is their thermal rating. Uh, I would expect everything in this to be 105 degrees C rated because uh, yeah they're all 105 degrees C rated which I'd expect of course because this thing is going to get a little toasty. So the idea is this pulls air in, uh, the fan pulls air in, it blows it across this heat sink and then out the, the back fins there. So anyway I will uh, put this back on temporarily. And I will put this away. We can look at the front panel. So this is the top. So you can see where they've fused the glass in here with some sort of a sealant. And then we've got our front panel controls right here. And this is the, uh, the connector they were using. So there appears to be six screws here. Okay. So this lifts off. And there's our front panel. So the first thing you'll notice is uh, the better logo again here. So obviously this board, that's uh, also the same cheap phenolic. Um, so I'm assuming that they're they're manufactured together by the same manufacturer. Capacitors are the same. Um, this one's actually quite uh, quite well laid out. It gives you all of the uh, all of the designators. Uh, some of the part numbers are on here. Um, for example, this is a 74HC164, uh, and that's actually what it is. So that's kind of nice. The buttons are are actually uh, quite nice got a nice clicky feel to them. The display is a, uh, oh that's nice, I didn't notice that. It's a three, three digit uh, LED display. If you actually look here, um, the controls of course have a big label, big graphic uh, on the other side. So they're pretty much sealed and all these buttons are just pressed through that, uh, that plastic film through holes. So the display has a, a, a cover over it that seals it. But they've actually still got the factory um, peel-off protective film on that LCD. 
So that's kind of disappointing that they didn't uh, bother to take that off because it doesn't it actually doesn't actually like water protect it or anything because the uh, display is protected by the uh, the decal. So that's just 7.4 series logic, and then we've got this chip here, which has a uh, a sticker on it which tells me immediately that that's firmware, so this is going to be obviously the main microcontroller that's running the whole show. Um, that's probably a firmware version. The Dash 120V, I would assume, is 120 volts. Because um, if they did make this for uh, Europe, they would probably uh, have to change some coefficients or whatever in the firmware for that. Um, one of the things that I was kind of disappointed about uh, with this was that every everything is in Fahrenheit, um, you can't change it to Celsius, uh, even though I live in Canada, which is quite annoying because um, I don't want to learn your completely outdated and frankly stupid scale of measuring temperatures. Uh, but anyway, uh, there is a table in the manual that allows you to convert the two, but I mean, I don't really care. Um, I'd rather not have to deal with that. But I guess whatever. It would be nice if there was like some magic jumper or something in here you could flip, but uh, it's a little too optimistic. This has really, really bad uh, lettering. Okay, so it says S3F94C4EZZ-DK946005FMU. There's no manufacturer marking whatsoever on that chip. So, unless I can re reverse search that number, I don't have any idea what what that chip is. Um, it's possible it could be one of those, um, you know, cloned PIC micros that are all oh so famous in China. Or maybe some... Actually, yeah, it, it can't be something like, uh, like an 8051 or something based because... Um, there's no E squared prom or anything around it. Actually, I guess it doesn't really need that. No, it does. It does. It would need E squared prom because when you set a temperature or a power level and you turn the power off and unplug it and you plug it back in, uh, it remembers the last settings. So there definitely is E squared prom in this chip. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look it up and see what that is. But uh, yeah, I mean, the build quality is uh, what I'd expect, I guess, for uh, uh, something like, like this. I mean, especially for the price, uh, it, it works really well, it, it does what it's uh, supposed to do, and uh, I mean, I've taken apart kitchen appliances that are way worse than this, uh, in particular a T-Fal um, toaster oven, which was so horrifying inside, I really didn't even want to put it back together, um, or nor could I put it back together, it was so cheap. Um, so. Even though this may not look comparable to some of the things that uh, you've seen me tear down or, you know, other, just, just other stuff in general, it's not as good, but uh, it's definitely not bad for the kind of area of electronics that this is uh, generally in. So now I'm just waffling. So hopefully uh, that was a little interesting to somebody, and uh, thanks for watching.